Just a reminder from your friendly neighborhood metalhead, if you like what you see, don't forget to click like and subscribe to The Heavy Underground. In January of 2018, the never-relenting Slayer announced their impending retirement. After 37 years, the most steadfast exemplar of thrash metal has envisioned an end to their long and storied career, but not before conscripting the band's worldwide horde for one last international campaign. Founding members Tom Araya and Kerry King are joined on the band's final global trek by longtime Slaytanic royalty Paul Bostaff on drums and Exodus's resident guitar icon Gary Holt, who continues to pay profuse six string tribute to the late great Jeff Hayman. Joined by the modern thrash mastery of Lamb of God, the rampant brutality of Poland's Behemoth, founding thrash brothers Anthrax, and fellow California metalheads Testament, the ever reigning Slayer lay waste to North America one final time. Descending upon western Pennsylvania, Slayer's final tour annihilates a damn near sellout crowd at the unfortunately named Keybank Pavilion in Bergenstown, Pennsylvania on June 9, 2018. Heavy traffic and a familial tailgate situation delayed my entry to the show, catching literally the final few seconds of testament from clear across the parking lot was disappointing, but the attendance of my cousins was a welcome surprise that necessitated experiencing Behemoth's pummeling extremity from afar. Entering the venue, the third band of the night were the inimitable Queens Hooligans Anthrax. Starting the show right, Cotton Amash provides a mission statement from the start as the lawn opens into a wide, vicious, and volatile pit, heralding the arrival of New York's thrash heroes. A gale force solo from Jonathan Donace drives the song with an added urgency, while gang-chanted lyrics, with the crowd fully invested, thicken the crushing atmosphere. Up next, the Joe Jackson cover, Got the Time, launches with manic fervor as the band settles into an almost entirely classic era set. Madhouse, from Spreading the Disease, is next on the agenda. Recognizing the exuberant crowd activity, Joey Belladonna intros the song. Before long, the crowd is thrashing along in a rubber room rage. An absolutely epic I Am The Law bounds from the stage following Madhouse, offering up a sentence of no-nonsense, bone-crushing thrash. A strident vocal cadence only amps up the intimidation. As the song unfurls with quick-paced brutality, the band's continued vitality is evident 37 years after forming. Scott Ian takes the microphone to incite further pandemonium in the rabidly frothing crowd before tearing into Evil Twin, from the band's latest album, For All Kings. Ripping through Evil Twin, the song soon settles into a thick, vicious churn reminiscent of many a classic Anthrax throwdown. The inhumanly energetic Joey Belladonna is a frenetic madman on stage, and his voice does not quit as antisocial rips from the speakers following Evil Twin. Originally performed by the French metal band Trust, Antisocial offers yet another chance for the 10,000 plus in attendance to join in the vocal fun with a well-sourced vocal trade-off near the close of Antisocial. Beginning with a simple mosh, the end of Anthrax's 40-minute set sees the crowd whipped into a roiling war dance by the band's iconic cut Indians. Setting the crowd on the warpath, the song doubled down in its final minutes before Scott Ian briefly stops the proceedings to provoke the crowd even further before completing the song in socially conscious brutality. After the band issues forth their thank yous and begin to make their way off the stage, Joey Belladonna invokes the memory of the late great Ronnie James Dio before taking leave himself. A crowd-pleasing set from the East Coast contingent of thrash metal's Big Four, Anthrax deliver an old-school mosh pit beatdown to tenderize the crowd. With the exception of Evil Twin, not a song is younger than 28 years old, but the band still manages to inject a feverish vitality to these classic tracks. Focusing heavily on the band's 1985 release Spreading the Disease and 1987's Among the Living, Anthrax's set leans heavily on the band's most iconic era in celebration of the decade that brought thrash metal to international prominence. Everyone's gonna move, okay? Up next, 
The scathing precision of Richmond, Virginia's Lamb of God closes out the undercard, led by the transcendentally brutal vocal lacerations of Randy Blythe and rounded out by his 20-year band companions, Willie Adler and Mark Morton on guitars, Chris Adler on drums, and John Campbell on bass, these modern thrash titans marshal their energy into a focused burr of pinpoint stringency. Omerta from Ashes of the Wake opens the set as a slow and caustic scrape begins the flesh-peeling affront, immediately carving a defiant mark on the assembled crowd. A rigorous pummel unbridles the band to reach another level of hostility as Omerta draws to a close before the raging destruction of Ruin launches. 2003's Ruin proves particularly vicious in the song's waning moments as the band wrings every last dose of hostility from this song. Invoking the call of the nature boy, Randy Blythe lets loose an exuberant woo before the next song. Dedicated to local Pittsburgh-based noisemakers Code Orange, the band open Walk With Me In Hell with a majestic sweep before reducing the crowd to rubble with the song's crushing gravitational waltz. Chris Adler's drums hit the senses like a barrage of gunfire, with Randy Blythe's voice strafing all levels of vocal brutality. Next, You've Got Something to Die For from Ashes of the Wake assails the thousands in attendance. A strident song with targeted guitar runs creating focused moments before bludgeoning the crowd with a churning beatdown. Thanking the crowd and their fellow tour mates, Randy Blythe whips the audience into a lather for Testament, Behemoth, and Anthrax before 512 from the band's 2015 release, Seven, Sturm and Drang, hurdles forth. The aggressive wailing of 512 rises like a phoenix over the song's pummeling ruthlessness and desperate reckoning. Quickly shifting into Engage the Fear Machine from the same album, Lamb of God trades in paranoia for a crushing, effective thrash suffocation. The brief solo near the end of Engage the Fear Machine quickly elevates the discourse before the thickening mire encroaches once more to close the song with punishing weight. Not relying on guitar fireworks to set the pace or tone, whenever Mark Morton or Willie Adler rise to lay waste with a solo or melodic run, their precision and clarity only heighten the tension and ratchet up the intensity during a tight and concise set from these modern thrash titans. A short break allows the band to rest for the briefest of moments before shearing faces with the strident Blacken the Cursed Sun from 2006's Sacrament. A slowly dragging drum aggression from Chris Adler supplies a seething undercurrent for the band to rally around with a staccato stomp. Once again, thanking the maelstrom of humanity before them, Randy Blythe stops to reflect on the reason for the evening's festivities. Dedicated to the guys in Slayer, Lamb of God settle in with the underhanded pull of Laid to Rest. This infecting track from Ashes of the Wake quick crawls through the air as Randy scalds the crowd with an accurate vocal screed. The song abusively doubles down on the bellicosity before Laid to Rest wails into the closing song. 2006's Redneck incites the crowd one last time as Randy and his hard-thrashing compatriots tear into the band's now ubiquitous Redneck with a rabid barrage. Utilizing their nearly 50-minute set to present nine sonic missives that succinctly plead their case for modern thrash metal dominance, Lamb of God bridged the gap between the foundational thrash of Anthrax and Slayer and the genre's hard-charging future. Their confident delivery and scalding intensity affording Slayer a measure of repose on their final tour, assured in the knowledge that their bestial sonic lessons were heeded, taken to heart, and carried forth by those who follow in their imposing shadow. Four bands down, only one group can sate the bloodthirsty crowd. Centered on founding members Tom Araya on bass and vocals and Kerry King on screaming guitar, Slayer boasts the exemplary timekeeping skills of longtime associate Paul Bostaff on drums 
and fellow thrash icon Gary Holt from Exodus taking the late Jeff Hayman's place at Tom Araya's right-hand side. Casting the crowd into darkness, the lights go out as the band's intro track, Delusions of Savior, chugs from the curtain stage. When the facade drops, Slayer take their place before their assembled horde and Repentless launches at maximum speed. Always a lethal threat, from the band's earliest days to their final release, 2015's Repentless, from the album of the same name, suffers no fools with its relentless attack. 1990's Blood Red quickly follows with a prescient and foreboding assuredness as the band tears through Blood Red with timeless malice. Next, the hateful and punishing brutality of Disciple from 2001's God Hates Us All surges forth in a gleeful clamor. A rabid and fiercely confrontational vocal spree from Tom Mariah goes for the throat as Tom, Carrie, and the boys seethe with malevolence all throughout this severe song. Mandatory Suicide from 1998's South of Heaven lurks forward after Disciple with another heartwarming slice of life from the Almighty Slayer. Mandatory Suicide descends into aural madness before the crushing, quick-paced bludgeon of hate worldwide careens through the night air. An impressive stage show, fusing lights, fire, and the band's trademark unceasing aggression heightens the experience as bursts of flame pulse with the music, and 2009's Hate Worldwide rages with a fury alongside classic songs almost two decades older. Perfectly illustrating this point, Seasons in the Abyss's lead-off track War Ensemble follows in bruising fashion. With rapid fire speed and rampant aggression, War Ensemble hits its mark to ignite the crowd in a destructive symbiosis. With War Ensemble's martial undertaking at a close, Jihad from 2006's Christ Illusion begins its slyly sneaking opening. Halting momentum and intense bursts alternate as Jihad levels the crowd with an unsettled affront. With the first appearance of a clean guitar tone, the next song, When the Stillness Comes, briefly allows a still suffocating respite from the night's full-bore thrash attack. A slow circling gravity, guitar-based unease from Kerry King, and a strong sense of ominous foreboding carry when the stillness comes to its briefly accelerated end. Wasting no time, post-mortem issues forth with hostile intent. This 32-year-old classic strafes the gathered masses with a brusque charge before ratcheting the intensity up even higher as the song roars to a close. Reaching all the way back to the band's 1983 debut, Black Magic conjures a potent spell with those in attendance. While Jeff Hayman's presence will always be missed, the addition of Exodus Max man Gary Holt is an inspired choice. All night, his solos never attempt to replicate the mortally departed Hayman, but offer his own incendiary style in service to these classic songs. Even the 35-year-old Black Magic surprises with Gary Holt's rancorously destructive guitar assault. Tom Araya addresses the crowd on the vicissitudes of karma before the band launches into payback from 2001's God Hates Us All. Battering through the pavilion, payback clatters with a flurry of hard-charging riffs from Masters King and Holt, and incessantly pummeling drums from Paul Bostaff keep the pace behind the kit. Discharged with a scalding harangue, Payback offers only virulent admonishment to the band's assembled victims. For only the second time of the night, a clean guitar tone rings through the darkened sky, as 1990's Seasons in the Abyss opens into a dank and fetid crawl before dragging to life with unnatural tenor. The ominously iconic opening creep soon quickens to a murderous pace, and Gary Holt and Kerry King trading solos is ultimately triumphant, but bittersweet with the absence of guitar master Hainman. Yet another prescient slab of social commentary, Ditto Head, from 1994's blistering Divine Intervention, butchers eardrums and rattles brain cells with its visceral picture of a society going off the rails. From increasing social unrest to pure pathological evil, Dead Skin Mask next emerges into the darkened air. From the Texas Chainsaw Massacre to the Silence of the Lambs, Many visual artists have put their stamp on the twisted tale of Ed Gein, but only Slayer have amplified the terror to untold dimensions through only skin-crawling sonic malevolence. Rolling on, 
the band charged forth like a battering ram with Hell Awaits, a vintage cut from 1985's sophomore album of the same name, Hell Awaits rages with unholy fervor, perfectly illustrating the band's long-standing devotion to dominant metal excellence and face-ripping thrash. Utilizing an intro tape for the unmistakable opening to South of Heaven, the song soon gets underway with a slow-moving, doomed procession alternating with a swarming din. Soon ramping up to an overwhelming tempest, a festering solo from Gary Holt bubbles to the surface. Booming, deconstructed noise rattles from the dissipating clothes of South of Heaven, heralding the onslaught of the band's seminal track, Raining Blood. Raging intent bleeds into unshackled aggression on Raining Blood, as martial precision dominates the song's middle moments before roaring through the song's waning moments in a viciously furious attack. With little warning, chemical warfare erupts from the stage following Raining Blood. A bestial roar overtakes Tom Araya's vocals for an especially feral vocal bashing. Representing the essential Haunting the Chapel EP, Chemical Warfare is a most welcome addition to the night's bloodletting. Drawing close to the end of the show, only one song is capable of closing the night. Unfurling a backdrop that memorializes their deceased compatriot, the Heyman name rises above the stage in a mock Heineken logo as the band lacerate the slatanic hordes of Western Pennsylvania with Angel of Death for the final time. With one foot on the gas and the other on your throat, Slayer blasts through this 1986 classic with venomous aplomb. Roaring to a close, the band linger behind to soak in the Slayer chants and thank their ravenous fans before leaving the Burgettstown stage for one final time. Currently on their farewell tour, the Los Angeles Thrashmaster Slayer arrived at the Key Bank Pavilion in Burgettstown on June 9, 2018 for a Western Pennsylvania homicide spree. Packed absolutely to the seams, a near sellout crowd greets these conquering metal heroes on their final North American run. Joined by Behemoth, Testament, Anthrax, and Lamb of God, Slayer's farewell tour offers a celebration of brutality, both past and present, as Slayer thoroughly bludgeoned the metal masses during their final campaign. With the passing of founding member Jeff Hainman, Gary Holt from Bay Area Toxic Walter's Exodus, steps up to ably fill Heyman's vaunted spot at Tom Araya's right hand. Once and again, drummer Paul Bostef keeps the Blitzkrieg pace as Tom and Carrie continue to hold the line with the band's 37-year crusade nearing its end. While delivering a blistering set of the band's trademark thrash antagonism, the ferocity of Slayer's entire career output is staggering. From the band's more fantasy-themed opening assaults in the early 80s to the dark and twisted real-life horrors of their classic late 80s and early 90s sonic salvos, and even the societal degeneration and human atrocity spotlighted over the last 25 years or so, each era gets a full hearing as the band celebrates 37 years of uncompromising attitude to the heavy arts. Summoning a more destructive force than most bands a third of their age, the Slatanic Conqueror's Slayer deliver a must-see concert for fans around the world. So, find a nearby show, buy a ticket, and witness the final crushing months of one of the most de consistently destructive and brutally dependable bands to ever exist.